So I've been showing you how to build a to-do app using Swift data in this course right here. But wouldn't it be great if we had a way to pre-fill our app with some default categories? Cause I'll be honest here, yeah, on app launch, the app is looking a bit dusty. You look dusty. And in this video, we're going to be looking into just that. I'll be showing you how to pre-fill your apps in Swift data and how to handle some interesting edge cases that you may not have thought of. So let's get into it. Okay, so for this video, and we'll be using Xcode Beta 3, yeah, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit of a sticky one. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few issues with this beta. So if you're watching this in the future, you probably got a nicer version. But in this beta that I'm using, Swift UI previews is just doo doo, it's broke, right? So we're gonna be running on the simulator quite a bit. But the first thing we need to do is we actually need to create a model for our category. So this is going to be the data that application is going to use when it first launches and you know pre-fills Swift data. So on our category, let's create an extension and we'll just create a basically data structure for our default categories. So you can see here that we've just got our category and we've got our static defaults and I've just initialized this with some categories that I want to have when my app is preloaded. Now what we could do if we wanted to is we actually could you know, preload our app within our content views on a pair. So within this content views on a pair here. Now the reason why I'm against this is because let's say in the future you come along and you want to change the UI of your, you know, well, not the UI, but the UX flow of your app. You've now got a problem where if on a peer you want to pre fill your data for this view, you need to make sure that this is the first view that a user sees. So it's actually possible for your app not to instantly pre fill that data. So a better way of handling this would actually be when our application is being loaded at the root, at that point is when we basically preload our data. So on our to-dos app entry point here, we're actually going to pre-fill our data from this point here where we set our model container. Now in order to do this, we're actually going to need to create our own custom model container and inject that into the Swift UI modifier that accepts that. Let's create a new file called items container. And then within this file, the first thing we're going to want to do, because we're going to be working with Swift data is import Swift data. And I'm just going to write out the skeleton for this and then we'll break it down. So you might be wondering, okay, why have I marked this container as an actor? Well, when you actually look at the documentation, when you're working with the context and um, model containers, a lot of it is actually using actors within Swift concurrency. And if you want to learn more about Swift concurrency, I do have a free car. I do have a free crash course on my channel, but essentially when you're working with the model container or model context, it's actually within an actor context. And what that basically means is that when you're trying to save, insert, fetch data and do all this other good stuff, you're basically having to work within an asynchronous context. So by marking this as an actor, you basically prevent yourself from having data races where you might insert something and try to query the same item at the same time. You always ensure that what you're saving is finished before Post. You always ensure that what you're doing has finished before you continue on to the next task. So that's why this is an actor for basically to help you prevent data races. Now within this actor, we actually need to have a function to help us create those items that we want to pre-fill in Swift data. So let's create a function called create. And some of the reasons before we've marked this as a main actor because we're going to, we want to make sure that we're performing this work on the main actor at Post. We're performing this work on the main thread and we don't really get into any kind of data races. And essentially all this function is going to do is it's static because we don't want to, I don't really want to have to create an instance of this app. So I just want to say items container dot create. And this is going to return some kind of container, which we'll use in a second. Now we're going to write some code inside of this create function together. And I'm going to basically break down each step in terms of what it means when you're actually trying to create your own container. Now the first thing you need to do, the first thing you want to do is actually create your spot. Well, not create, but define the schemas that your model container is going to use. Now, in our case, we're going to define the item schema. And the reason why I'm not just doing the category schema here is because let's say in the future, you want to like pre-fill this with some default to do's. You can easily do that within this function here. So in here, we're just going to say let. And then we're just going to pass in an array of entities. Now in this array, we need, just need to say item.self. Now, the nice thing with Swift data is that we don't need to start specifying all of our schemas. If you've actually got them as children of, you know, one of your models, it automatically, you know, picks it up. But let's say you had two completely different schemas that didn't have any kind of relationships, then you have to define all of them within this array. But because if you go into item, 
we've got a relationship with category. We don't need to specify category as well. Now, after we define the schema, we then need to create our model configuration. And if you're wondering what this model configuration does, um, if you just go to this initializer here, you can basically see all of the things that you have available to you. So you have like name, schema, the URL, read only. If you want to set up your cloud kit container, app group. So this is basically, if it's in memory, this is you basically setting up the configuration of your model so you can check, you know, tweak and change it. I would highly recommend you go and check out the documentation to see what's possible in terms of customizing your model. So we'll just create an instance of this and then after this, and then after this, we're then going to create our container. So this is the actual model container we'll be returning. So we're going to say model container. We're going to say model container for, and then in here, the for, we're going to pass in our schema that we defined with the ski or well, the models that we want. And then we'll pass in our configuration like so. And this actually froze. So we're going to mark this with a try and I'm going to break the rules. Yeah, we'll go for some wrap today, <laughs> but we'll go for some wrap this. So now we've got our model container. Now, the next thing we want to do is I now at this point want to actually pre-fill my app with some, you know, dummy data. So in here, we're actually now going to loop through the dummy categories that we had and inject that into this container. So we're going to say category dot defaults. And then we're going to use a for each and then in line here, we're just going to say container dot main context dot insert and then use a dollar sign zero notation to basically loop through all those items and insert it. So this will now insert all of our defaults into our model container on app launch. And then finally, the last one we need to do is actually just return this. So our function is satisfied and ain't screen matters no more. So we're going to return container. So how we actually use this? Well, all we need to do now is go back into our main app entry point here. And then rather than using this variation of the model container, Swift UI uh, modifier, we're going to switch this out for the one that accepts a container. And then in here, we're just simply going to say items container dot create like so. That's pretty much it. So now our model container that we create will be passed into our main app and it can use it and whatnot. So we should, when we launch this for the first time, see some categories. So let's see if this works. So I'm just going to launch this on a iPhone 14 plus and we'll see what happens. And I just realized that I've actually it. <laughs> so the mistake that I've got is that in the start of project that I built, I forgot to add in the plus button. So let's just quickly add that in now so we can actually access these categories. So where is my toolbar? Do, 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 do. Okay, cool. So here I'm just going to say, toolbar, placement, action, label. And then for the action here, I actually have a uh, property here called show, cat yeah, show create category dot toggle. And then this label is just going to be a SF symbol with a plus like so. So now let's run this properly now that we've got this added into the toolbar. So let's do this now. Cool. So we've got our plus button. Now, if I tap on this, you can now see that we've got our categories preloaded here now by default. We actually have an edge case here that I've not covered and I've not shown you and we'll cover that in the next bit of this video. But if you're enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And also as well, let me know in the comment section below what other type of videos you want to see because I do these videos for y'all in it. Now, the issue that we actually have here is that if I actually deleted study because I'm able to delete categories and if I now rerun the app, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to stay there or do you think it's going to like disappear completely? Well, if we open up our categories, it actually comes back. And the problem that we've got here is that when we're loading our categories and pre-filling it in Swift data, we're not actually only doing it one time. The code that I've written actually happens every single time. Now, if that's something that you want, then cool. But in my case, I don't want to have to insert every single app launch. So we're going to need to use something called user defaults. They help us basically check to see if it's the first time that someone has launched the app. And then we're going to only insert it into Swift data then. And you 
if you're wondering, I, I have videos on all this stuff. So in our main app entry point, we're actually going to use the app storage here to help us track whether this is a first time launch or not. So I'm going to add this in. So by default, this is going to be set to true because we, if it's the first time, it is the first time launch. And if this was to any, you know, launches after that, we'll then set this to false. So we don't execute this code. Now we need to find a way to pass this into our create function and also modify it as well. Cause right now there's no way for us to write code within the Swift modifier cause it's not like a closure. So let's go into our create uh, function here and on here, We're going to first of all just create a new parameter called should create defaults. And this will be a Boolean. And then within our function here, we're now going to wrap this code specifically within an if. So if should create defaults, then we'll insert this into the context. And then after we've you know, inserted it. We then want to set this to false because we don't want to create the defaults anymore. So should create defaults is equal to false. Now what will happen here is you'll get an error saying that you can't assign a value to this because it's a constant and it's right. You can't do that. What we do have in Swift is something called an in out parameter. So we can mark this as in out and that allows us to now modify whatever we pass into this function. So in our main app entry point here, we can now simply update this and we can change this now to accept, you know, some kind of parameter that's a Boolean and we can also modify it as well. So in our case, that's going to be this is first time launch. So we'll just say here is first time launch here and that's pretty much it. So if we go back into our create function, we should now say if it is you know, if you should create these defaults, then loop through and insert them or, and then after it, you know, set it to false. So we don't do this again. And if we, you know, if this is false, this will never execute. So I've already run this app. So what I'm actually going to do is first of all, stop it from running and then delete it. So it's like a brand new, you know, fresh launch and we'll now run it again. Hit the plus button. And you can now see that we have our categories like, um, you know, last time. And you can see here that we don't actually have these um, categories showing up in the order of the array that I've defined because it's basically the saves are kind of asynchronous. So if you want to have a specific order, then I'd add another property called order to the model and then sort on that order. But I'm not going to do that in this video. Maybe that's a challenge for you to look into. So test it, test yourself and see if you can do it. But if I was to delete one of these categories now, so if I was to delete family and then um, let's just rerun it and see if we see family again. And if I go to the plus button, you'll see now that we actually don't see family anymore. So now we're only injecting our categories one time and that's pretty much it. So in my opinion, we now have a way better UX because we're providing a user with some categories by default. Now, now that's pretty sweet, right? And if you want to learn more about Swift data, you should actually check out this playlist on the screen here because I have a whole bunch of videos about Swift data for you to check out all for free. And also, if you want to get started with Swift UI, I 100% recommend that you check out this playlist that has over 90 videos here. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.